How Not to Send a Howler, a Guide by Wolfstar, by Twisted Clockwork. Molly Weasley's voice faded from the great hall, and the silence immediately replaced it. Nobody moved. Nobody spoke. The only disruption to the deathly quiet hall was the flap of owl wings. Looking up to the sound, everybody watched as the tawny all dropped a similar red envelope in front of Harry. The black-haired boy looked down at the letter lying on his plate and hesitated slightly before picking it up. He takes a deep breath, preparing himself for whatever his uncles were about to declare before the entire student body. Summoning his Gryffindor courage, he tore the envelope open. Harry James Potter, you absolute legend! rang throughout the great hall. Everybody stared in a howler in shock. I am so bloody proud of you, kid, Sirius continued. You're really living up to the marauder's name. A slight rustling can be heard from the background of the howler before another voice joins Harry's overjoyed godfather. Sirius, he's in trouble. You can't congratulate him for something like this. Oh, come on, Remus. You've got to admit, you're a little impressed. We've never thought of doing something like that. That's because it's illegal. That never stopped us before. Serious. The other man just sighs before carrying on. Besides, it doesn't matter what I think of it. It was dangerous and reckless. Sixteen-year-old Mooney would have been congratulating him. Sirius argues. He wouldn't, actually. Sixteen-year-old me would have way more tact than celebrating such an act in front of witnesses. How else do you think I managed to slip under the radar so much? It would be hard to miss a smile in Sirius's voice when he loudly announced, Hear that, Minnie? I told you Remus was as guilty as the rest of us. He was a mastermind behind most of our pranks. Shit. Remus Lupin, your potty mouths. <laughs> there are children listening. Pat food, we are not sending that. Why not? Because we're not. If you want to send a howler to Harry, then at least tell him he was wrong and that he shouldn't have done what he did. But he flew a car to Hogwarts. Even James and I never came up with something that ingenious. After a beat of silence, Remus picks up again. Serious? Give me that letter. No. Serious? No! Footsteps echoed around the hall as Sirius runs away with the leather in his hand. Petfoot, give me that sodding leather! Another set of footsteps can be heard chasing Sirius. You have to catch me first, Moons! It's not a fucking challenge! Crap. After what sounds like another chase and scuffle could be heard, the sound of two bodies hitting the floor recognized around the hall. Mooney! Moon! Remus! Okay, fine! Here! Wasn't that hard, was it? Now, we are going to destroy this and starting a new one. Sirius's voice comes back, but this time it's cautious and slightly worried. Monty? Monty, bring that ladder back! Shit! Quick, close the window! Remus shouts. Why the hell did you hold it above your head? You're short! There was no way your five foot nine ass was getting it back. Well, neither of us are getting it back now! Their bickering faded out, indicating Monty the Owls flying further away from the house. The howler tears itself apart in shreds and settles back onto the table. Um, Harry mumbles, while scratching his head. Sorry about that? Dumbledore shakes his head fondly. Next to him, McGonagall can be seen hiding a smile behind her head. In fact, as Harry looked closer at the staff table, all the teachers had, had looks of nostalgia on their faces. Well, all except Snape, who looked like he was trying to set the remaining scraps of paper on fire with his mind. Yours was definitely better than mine, mate, Ron eventually comments, picking Scabbers back up. The redhead emerged from the redhead's robes as soon as Sirius began to speak. Maybe it was just curious, Harry thought. Dumbledore clears his throat before entering the hall. It seems like the marauders are still causing mischief at Hogwarts, even after all these years. Enjoy breakfast, everyone.